back again now we're at the bottom which is Revelation and you'll notice that instead of using 63 as his first date line he's using 56 why well in the first place he's writing in 88 AD which means that he's not going to be predicting about when the temple falls because it already fell he's not going to be predicting from the same standpoint as the others about future history because his writing point is 88 AD long after theirs okay so how is he going to tie to Matthew 24 okay because see Matthew 24 is 63 it's 63 in Luke so how is he going to tag Luke and Mark is also 63 how is he going to tag that and here's the cleverness of it remember I told you the 63 is 63 years to the expected millennium had there been no church this was mapped out from Moses forward the whole plan of time was mapped out in Psalm 90 and Jews even know that today but they forget how the meter works okay Psalm 90 was mapped to Genesis 1 which was a 1050 there were seven 1050s okay by the time you get to Christ talking here it's seven but that wasn't the original schedule all right the Talmud speculated that the last 2,000 years would be for Messiah all right because they were tying trying to unify the books of Jubilee which were not Bible with Bible it was a speculation so Christ is playing to that speculation when he does the 7350 because it's 1050 times 7 he's not saying okay at the time he dies that it has to go that way because if they had accepted him by the time he died two weeks later then it wouldn't have gone that way it was still an open option whether the tribulation would start and church would start at the time he's talking but he's telling them that there's that option by doing the timeline out to the Jubilee 7000 which was a really a misreading of Psalm 90 Jubilee is a misreading Psalm 90 is 350 syllables and you can read that as 7 times 50 which would be shorthand for 7350 or you can read it as 5 times 1050 using the 70s because there's one set of 70 years in between each one they're reading it backwards but since Christ knows they're not going to believe in him even though they're technically able he's running the timeline out based on that garbled understanding of the book of Jubilees okay so he's using 63 at the time Luke is writing that's 58 AD and he's using 63 first of all I've explained why but as far as the forward use of it to the tribulation I mean the millennium because the millennium still could have occurred on time even though it's now church as of 58 AD ever since for you know 30 AD Pentecost it became the church age well the church could have matured in time and the old schedule still could have been met okay the same thing is true when Mark is writing he's writing in 69 AD it could have been that the, tri the tribulation could have started right after the temple went down which is the main reason why he's writing and I really suspect that he also wrote the book of Hebrews but I have to go through more to prove that because the book of Hebrews tracks Mark's gospel almost exactly its text the order of its text and the things it says is tracking Mark's gospel but even so 63 I'm writing you 63 years after Judea became a promise is a pun on 63 years from Christ is talking which is what the text of Mark is covering that was when the millennium was supposed to occur under the old Jewish time okay but once you get to Revelation he's writing 56 years after Christ died at age 33 this is another convention that they use Christ's own age okay that's a year past when the tribulation should have begun under the old schedule had church matured at the same time that Israel was supposed to get the millennium in 94 AD he's running a year late 
okay so he's subtracting 7 subtracting 7 from 63 because 63 would have been the millennium minus 7 that would be the start of the tribulation he's subtracting 7 to say hi the tribulation should have started by now but it didn't and that's why I'm writing you it's the exact same numerical theme that he uses in Revelation 1 okay the whole purpose of the book of Revelation is to explain why the tribulation didn't begin on the old schedule okay which is basically while well, church hasn't matured yet and so now he's going to write an update on how long it takes and how do you know, how do you know? And of course the answer is you don't know because John 17, when Father says the church is mature enough to be a gift to Christ, that's when the rapture happens. Well, nobody can know that. I don't even know how mature I am, let alone you, let alone the whole body of Christ. Because it's got to be a gift to Christ. We're like a harem for him. Okay, so the 56 takes away, subtracts 7 from the 63. Alright, because he's writing 7 years away from when this 63 was supposed to terminate. He's writing in the period that should have been the tribulation. Okay, now it's real important also because 56 is a very prominent meter in Psalm 90 which is the psalm of all the map of time and most Jews know that if you talk to them you know that's the one with the famous verse 4 that says the day of the Lord is like a thousand years it's actually a map of all of what time scheduled for the Jews was okay it's got more functions than that but that was one of its functions that's why Jews use it today all right that's why the book of Jubilees was written, and it was written wrong because it was looking at the 350 syllables of Psalm 90 as if it was 750s instead of 570s. 56 is a very prominent meter there, which you'll find if you go into my Psalm 90 channel in Vimeo. Just do Brain Out Vimeo Psalm 90, and you'll get my channel. All right? The Psalm 90 videos show you the meter and how prominent 56 is. Moses actually constructs that meter as a palindrome. Okay, so he's using 56 here to remind you of Psalm 90 also. Okay, to remind you of it. It's also a prominent meter in Isaiah 53, which is a map, annual map, of time from the first David's birth to the last scheduled Messiah's death because Christ was supposed to live until he was 40 but he dies, get this, seven years early. So an extra seven years had to be spent taking down the temple so he's debiting that from the 63. You see how clever that is? He's reminding you of all those things simply by using 56. As soon as I saw it I knew everything I just told you. Because if you're steeped in this you know, remember, they didn't have TV, and they didn't have all of our modern distractions. Their way of getting entertainment and enjoyment was to learn scripture and literature, which they'd repeat to themselves as they did whatever they did with their hands. Okay? So once you're familiar with all that, by all that repetition, the minute you see a number that's familiar, like if you saw 666, you know, like in the <clears throat> Donald Trump stuff, 666 Park Avenue is one of the buildings that Jared Kushner owns, and everybody makes fun of 666. Why? Because it's a familiar Bible number in the book of Revelation. Well, it's the same thing here. 56 is a very familiar meter number. It's probably the most common. Pan Bible. From Genesis through Revelation, the most common way to meter text is almost always 56. Okay, so 56 is 7 greater than 49. 49 was the year in which Daniel prayed to restore the temple, and seven years later, seven years of building later, it's constant 21 years, it got rebuilt. All right, so now he's referencing temple being rebuilt by 56. He's also referencing high. This should be a tribulational period going to the millennium. You see, it's all this clever number play. 
Okay, so now what text is he using? All right, because he's going to a, forward. He's going to a different period of history too. All right, what's the text? He said, and she sat on many waters. The whore, the whore. So by 88 A.D., of course, the whore in Rome is still Domitian. All right, when he's writing, 56 years after 88 A.D. is 144 and at that point there's a whore sitting in Jerusalem named which was renamed Aeolia Capitolina and the whore in that case was a pig temple sitting atop where the Holy of Holies was okay there was a new whore in Rome too at that time but it wasn't yet Christian okay it was the, the whole movement after Hadrian died, the whole movement under um, Antoninus Pius and Marcus Aurelius was to go back to Roman religion. Okay, so this is pretty, sitting on many waters is still talking about Rome at that time also, in the future. So if you got, you were at 144 AD and you're looking at this and you knew to use a meter, you're like, oh yeah, Rome. sitting on many waters religion sitting even on the waters of Jerusalem through that pig temple you see how relevant this is now there's more to say about it than this I just want you to see at this point that this 56 is deliberately deducting 7 because he's writing when the tribulation should have started and 7 years later was supposed to be the millennium and he's basically telling you, hi, it ain't going to happen on time. I'm writing you at the end of the first year, and I'm still here. There's no rapture. Here's why. And that's what the whole book of Revelation is about. So you see, the thing I want you to get here is that these numbers and the text all tie together to tell you something in the past, they tie to tell you something in the present, and they tie to tell you something in the future, and they're all related each time. The text is related each time, and it's very witty and biting. And that was how you were supposed to read the scripture. This is how you're supposed to read prophecy. But you can't do that in the English or any translation. You have to know the meter. And obviously they did, because how deliberate do you want to get here? And it's not like it's just this instance. It keeps on being this way. I'm just picking this instance because it's at the beginning of each letter. Okay? So, you know, play with the four chapters. I'm not, you know, he's tagging Ephesians 1, 4a here, but I'm not, and Luke 1, 2, but I'm not explaining that. There's so many things to explain, I'd have to be making videos forever. So play with these four chapters. See if you can use what I gave you so that you can learn how to do it yourself, and you'll see how accurate it is. Go look up the history that's referenced and see how biting the satire is. And again, ignore these little accent marks at the end. That's a paste problem when I paste it from Bible Works 9, which is where this text comes from. Okay, that's enough for now. Peace out.